Hello and welcome to Code Pro, your place for coding, apps, and technology. Today we're going to be discussing five tips for working in a team-based setting. So most mobile developers tend to work in small teams or maybe even alone. So when working in larger teams where maybe there's a design team, a QA team, a product team, and a bunch of other programmers on your team, it's important to understand some of these skills and tips in order to thrive in such an environment. So tip number one is going to be source control. So let's take Git for example. In a team-based environment, source control is going to become very important. More than likely, your team is going to be using some form of Git flow where you branch off and work on a particular feature or a bug fix, and then you commit that back to a develop branch ultimately, but it's going to be peer reviewed by your team members before it gets merged. So it's important to keep in mind a couple of the following things. Uh, one, you'll want to keep your commits small and focused. So you don't want to commit a bunch of files. You're going to want to just commit only the small areas that you worked on and be very careful about what you commit. Sometimes you can commit files that you don't intentionally mean to commit. And if it gets through peer review, it can cause problems later on in the project and you don't want to be in that kind of a situation. So you want to commit small, commit often, make sure that you're tracking the remote branches and you're pulling changes into your branch as soon as they get merged in. So that way you can lessen the chances of having a merge conflict. You'll also want to learn how to submit pull requests so that your team members can review the work that you've done and that they can give you feedback, either positive or negative, about your changes and that you are okay with that before those get merged into the branch. Another important thing is to make sure that when you're working on a task, you try to work on one thing at a time. It might be easy to make a bunch of changes in that set of files that you're working in and commit all of them up at once, but if something goes wrong, it's hard to isolate what that problem might be. So even though you can fix a lot of things all together and then commit all that at once, it's good to work on a focused problem one at a time, commit it, push it in, have your team review it, and then if something does go wrong, you can isolate that problem, fix it relatively quickly, and then move on from there. Tip number two is going to be working well and keeping communication open with your design team. Now, as mobile developers, we tend to work with designers if we ourselves are not the designers, which sometimes that happens. And it's important to make sure that we communicate what we can and cannot do to the design team and gauge their expectations and understand the requirements that they want to deliver to us to implement. So sometimes what happens is little details get missed or little interactions might not be implemented the way the design team wants it. And at the very end of the project or the very end of the sprint, you have a design team who is frustrated because something isn't behaving the way they expected it. And had there been communication from the very beginning about the requirements, that never would have happened. So it's important to be on good terms with them and to be able to steer them in the right direction. It's also important to always be looking at what they're designing. Sometimes the designs aren't going to work on the platform that you're working on if you're an iOS developer or an Android developer. So you being the technical engineer on your platform, you know the behaviors, you know the interactions, you can educate the design team that, hey, maybe this doesn't work the way you were expecting it to work on this platform and we need to rethink this approach. So again, it pays to be on good open terms with your design team and keep that flowing from the very beginning. So tip number three, stick to the design pattern that was in your project. So if you're jumping into a team-based setting on a larger project, you may start to see coding conventions and design patterns that you are not used to. And it's very important that you don't trample all over that code and do whatever is comfortable for you um, despite whatever might be in the code. Now, if the code's really bad, it needs to be refactored or re-architected, well, then that's a different scenario. Then maybe it's valid in those situations. But if the architecture is decent enough to work in, then you want to stick to that pattern. A good rule of thumb is the code should look like it was written by one person, even though five, six, or more people may have touched that code at some point in time. Tip number four, always test on a real device. It's so easy to always use the simulator for most things. It's convenient, it's fast, we don't have to plug something in and wait for it to unlock. But the problem is your QA team and your test team probably is gonna be using real devices. So for certain kinds of applications that use the camera, that use video recording, audio recording, lots of those are gonna depend on having real hardware to test with. So usually if you have a feature that you're implementing on a simulator and it's fairly complex, maybe it involves the use of some hardware, always make sure that you vet it on a real device first before you say it's done. Another thing too is usually we have to support 
at least usually two versions of iOS. So it's always good to try to keep an extra device that might be on the lower version of iOS and then test that same feature to make sure that the APIs aren't different on the older version and don't cause problems or bugs for users who might be on iOS 10, for example, when iOS 11 is the current version of iOS. And tip number five, if you get stuck working on a feature or trying to fix a bug, don't sweat it. The most important thing is don't spin your wheels on it for too long. Usually what you'll want to do is ask yourself, have I tried every possible scenario of something or have I exhausted all possible paths that I can explore? And if the answer to that is yes, then it's usually a good idea to reach out to a coworker or somebody else on your team for like a second set of eyes, a second opinion. And usually in most cases, you'll be able to figure out something you missed. They can help you solve a problem and then you can move on from there. But if that doesn't work, then put it behind you, go on and move on to the next feature that you need to implement or the next bug you need to fix. Try to solve that. And usually what happens is you'll come back to that first problem you couldn't figure out and then something will click because you've rested your mind, you've worked on something else, and you'll be able to solve it quickly. And you won't have wasted too much time on it. You may have fixed one or two other things along the way, and then everything gets done in a timely fashion. And that wraps it up for these five developer tips. So I hope you found this advice helpful. If you did, let me know. Go ahead and smash that like button and consider subscribing to Code Pro to stay up to date for all the latest tutorials. If you're a new iOS developer, make sure you check out my iOS Development Fundamentals course. It contains over three hours of video tutorial content, and it's great for new developers just getting started. You can find signup links down below in the description on Skillshare and Udemy. Uh, you'll get the course signup for 50% off on Udemy and two months of Skillshare Premium for free if you use my signup links. So I highly suggest you check it out. Make sure you follow CodePro on social media, on Skillshare, and on Udemy. And let me know in the comments section down below what is the largest team that you've ever worked on as a mobile developer. Thank you so much for stopping by, and I'll catch you in the next one.